Well, here we go with part three of the man cave remodel. It's mostly going to be nitpicking little things and moving little things around to other places. I, little things you can't really foresee until you get all the remodeling done and things moving around where you want them. Then you, then you got to nitpick everything into its final place. And uh, I'm, this, that's what mainly what I'm going to go through this time. And I just 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 gotta gotta do a lot of nitpicking to get this get everything in its place, and I gotta wait till next weekend, Friday, Saturday, to uh, get those uh, gun mounting strip rack things. It's like a strip of wood with metal uh, U shapes on them that are padded there. I can move those in as close to each other or as far away as I want to, depending on what kind of rifle I'm hanging up. I should have bought those from the start because I can get them closer, like down to the desk or to the top, well, top of the dresser or on the wall or whatever. I can get them closer to the floors where they don't have to reach so high. But, here we go with part three and hopefully this will be the final. So, let's go. Okay, I just hung up another shelf over there and they also gave me they also gave me that screwdriver there this pencil and the bubble level. I'm going to set that in a small piece of lath or something and use that for, for leveling small stuff, but anyway got the shelf nice and level and I took the collector tins off the bottom of the rifle rack and put them over there because I'm going to put this one above the floor rack. So I've only got four other guns to hang up and I need I actually need six notches over here. Five will, will do because the 1077 right there, you can see how thick that thing is. It won't go in them notches. I have to widen the notches. But anyway, I just had enough room on that shelf for those vintage Crossman tins there and a bigger Benjamin one. I got three of three different sizes and years of those. So oh and uh, down there I got three boxes of 303 British cartridges. The brown box is some original factory cartridges from 67 174 grain and the Peters there and the Super X are 180 grain jacketed soft points and of course the the seal of two cartridges there's there was 40 of those I saw the service manuals and junk so I have all that stuff over there got one more shelf to put up reach up that high to mark it and drill it and everything. Looks pretty good though. I have the shelves on either side of the gun rack there and you know. Here and there. So a lot of things to look at in that corner. like these beer coasters here from the western part of the country and from over in the UK and beer bottle labels I soak off the bottles dry flat and put them on these poster boards that'd be would take up less space than being on the bottles and I rearranged a couple of these shelves to get the cup full of brushes and grease pencils over there with the Horn 80, uh, 490 lead balls for the 50 cal. Get that out of my possibles bag. Too heavy. So I could then rearrange these shelves here. Ran out of space for all these books and had to make some more. So that, that's better. 
And here's the strip racks I was talking about earlier. Got them for like one, two, three, etc. So I got two pet two sets of the the three gun racks so I can get six of the vintage CO2 rifles in the in the same spot as four. That'll work. And I lowered those pegs for the hats with us. I got four out of five of my my hats over there now. Cleared things up a little bit to make room. And here you can see uh, after I started cleaning up the desk and move the printer and the end baskets around and all that. Still some things I need to keep close, but I cleaned up a lot of the mess. Keep the flag flying high there too. <laughs> and my coffee pot. Got a lot of stuff. I, yeah, you know this desk really needs a pencil drawer. That's my biggest problem with all this bits of clutter you see right, right here. Need to make a pencil drawer for this thing. Okay, I started hanging these things. And I got a bubble level they gave me with these shells over here. I'm using that to, to get them as level as I can. There's four screws in each one. So I get that level and take the take a oh that little brass screw right there and tap it in with that hammer to make a mark so I can drill it out to put the thing back in in the right place this time I had the hole there drilled and it was I forgot I put it where the holes went on the real tree rack which is about two two and a half inches in from where the upright the center of the uprights are so I had to move it over two and a half inches so I can I just start all over again basically I hate that when I, I forget one dummy little thing but it'll get there I just gotta drill all these I got a smaller drill bit right there one eighth that'll fit in those screw holes so once I get that one straight I can just drill straight through to make a pilot hole and then I can get these grommets in and all that and I can lock it down and then start on the other one over here okay I got a screw on the bottom and a screw on the top it's the level pretty good now I got a 1 8 inch drill bit here I'll drill through these two center holes just some pilot holes so I know where to drill the quarter inch ones to uh, line everything up and tighten them down and I'll put the tape right like right across here to uh, measure 19 inches to the right to the center of that as well as I can. Alrighty. A little more cleaning to do. That powder really sticks in the plastic top of the dresser, but anyway. I got them in place. I used a little bubble level from the they gave me with the shelves on the left there. And got these things dead on. I also have that real long is like a five foot bubble level over there, the aluminum one that I laid I laid across the top hooks on the bottom three and it was dead on level just the way I used that little bubble level to uh, level each strip and get them, get them level horizontally and vertically basically that's about as square as you can get them And uh, top to bottom, it's uh, 160 Pell gun, variant 15556. First year model number 70 Pell gun. Uh, first year 73 low serial number, and it's got the Weaver KV60. A 3 to 5 by 28 millimeter scope on it from. 
from, from the 50s, built out of steel on El Paso. And then you got the Han Super BB repeater from six, August 67. And then the model 9922 repeater, a 22 pellet repeater that is. Uh, early 66 is the nearest I can get with my research. And below that is the 73 Saddle Pal. I, I can't remember the year on that one. I'll have to look at it again. And on the bottom is the Model 700 Pellmaster uh, 22 Rolling Block from April 69. Let's see if I can get a little close up going here. That's a Winchester 4x32 AO on the 160 there. That Han Super BB repeater is in very good condition. That thing down there looks new. And everything works. Okay, so then we'll take the uh, the real tree four four gun rack and put it above the real tree floor rack here. So I get the last four rifles up off the floor. The little Daisy 104 looks kind of puny next to the the RWS 320M and then a Diana 24D above that and the 66 AB crossman on the top and I moved the 99 and the 73 saddle pal around since the saddle pal and the model 166 are similar actions okay well I gotta raise that up one more inch because don't go on wall anchors. I want my anchor real tight and they're spinning around on me. I don't know why. Well, I use three eighths instead of half inch uh, sheetrock in this house when they built it. But anywho, these are both real tree gun racks. I thought that was pretty cool. Gun belt, one sticking out, holster sticking on the right is a right hand cross draw. But anywho, all these gun boxes and stuff. I gotta put some of those in the garage. And got the shelf arranged as well as I might. And some of the guns are piled up over there, or now over here. The Daisy 104 on the bottom, then the RWS 320M. One above that is a Diana 24D from December 94 and then a 60, Crossman 66 AB on top with a center point 4 by 32 on Hawk mid-rise rings and over here I found never thought of doing it till today you got to move these rifles back to where the upright on the left is up against the pistol grip and then it'll stand up proper. I'm, I'm going to move those uprights in uh, two and a half inches on each side making it a total of five inches narrower and that'll, that'll do it. And that and moving, moving them back to the pistol grip it'll be sitting on the barrel but at least it won't fall over every time you breathe on it. It won't be tipped over as far like you see on those Two near the bottom there. And with the, the two 760s sitting in the corner there, 10 on the racks, and the, the basket case in the box down there, that will make like 14, including the Air 17 down there. 
and this guy within the range there is well as can be minus the bag of garbage from cleaning and sweeping and whatnot. Now I wonder if I can get a decent close up of that. No, not really too much light. Old ultra high Kentucky rifle there, percussion kit kit rifle had raw brass castings and all that. You had to grind a shape and polish and everything. I did. I fit. I bought it in '77, like the fall of '77, in early like the early spring of '78. I finished it. And got a lot of stuff brewing stuff got those dungeons down there including a lot of bandage stuff from the wound center I had for those leg ulcers but that's another story so I can took everything out of there so I can put the gun some gun stuff in there and I like those the gun rack strip things. Although I like to put the hooks closer together and a little lower on the on the bottom one. They're, they're, they got three sets of hooks on each set of strips. You can see where it goes together right there, but I could I could shorten them things a little bit by getting them closer together. Their rifles are too far apart. And of course, can't forget the maple display case here for that John Wayne collector shootist pistol. Okay, here's a better shot of that. Got six of the seven uh, Crossman CO2 rifles on the wall there, as previously described. Both display cases and Number seven CO2 rifle is second from the right to repeat air 1077. That's a fat son of a gun. That stock is way too too thick, not toward, especially towards the bottom. Pardon my mess from making coffee. And The Daisy Air Gun Boy has just died in the last few months, matter of fact. And five 1894 3030s there. So I got the desk cleaned up as well as I might. But that thing really needs a pencil drawer. I'm not going to build a pencil drawer, stick under there, and I can clear off all this clutter under the monitor and some of that clutter over there. Got to get rid of some of that too. Well, at least I got all the guns off the floor except for the few extra 760s. Can't do much about that right now. I've just got no place for them. Just nice to have it all, have the floor cleared up where you got room got room to get around I love getting getting the uh, old fermenter stand behind me towards the on the front of the room and get that cleared out so you got a lot of room look to get around over here now plus the heavy magnums and stuff on the floor rack this stuff on a wall rack where they're weighing down the anchors the screw anchors you know what that that one up there is leaning towards the left. I think I don't know if you can tell there. It's leaning towards towards my left a little bit. Sure looks like it. What the? The room is basically done as, as well as I can get it for 
what little space I've got. Okay, well, I think we finally got the man cave done. So for a couple of things I'm going to put away after making coffee and laundering junk. So that's it for this time. Keep your powder, powder dry, your gun oiled. And good Lord willing, the creeks don't rise. We'll see you again.